job in? I don't know. Neither do I. It's ridiculous. I assure you that I'm not implicated. Well, I don't know, but we'll find out, won't we, Speck? You bet we will, Arden. I don't know nothing. Me too. that you're under arrest, lady, on suspicion of the murder of Dr. Hugo Robin. These objects were found in the wreckage left by the explosion in which Dr. Robin met his death. Miss Loring, can you identify them? Yes, they were his. On January 18th, the doctor made a new will, naming you as sole heir. It's your contention, I understand, that you knew nothing of this will until after his murder. I object, Your Honor. The prosecution has not yet proved a murder charge. Objection sustained. Order. Order in the court. We just got to see the judge. How many times do I have to tell you? No kids allowed. But you don't understand, officer. We have information relative to the case. Yeah, we know something awful important, too. Your boss up there will be awful mad if you don't let us tell him. I said beat it. Well, you're not very polite about it. You could at least say please. Please. If Officer Kennedy could arrange to keep the door closed, we'll proceed with the case. Can I get out, too? Can I, huh? Can I, huh? Please? Proceed. No more questions. Your witness. Miss Loring, will you tell the court how long you and Dr. Robbins employed? About a year. And on the day in question, were you on duty as usual? Yes. I was in the office all day. Oh, she was not. That's a big fear. She was a damn. I saw her there. And I saw her speak out. I guess I forgot. 
I was there for a few moments to, to leave some things to be repaired. If Your Honor, please. I ask that these children be held for questioning. Their memories seem a bit more accurate than the defendants. You may question the children as material witnesses at the proper time. Your Honor, we have put this witness on the ground. She's too young to testify. I am not. I'm five years old, but I'm six. Age is not the determining factor. It's a question of competency. Uh, come here a moment, my dear. Hello. Hello. Mr. Brown, the butcher has one just like this, only bigger. And he takes a big piece of meat and goes bang. <laughs> we'll talk about Mr. Brown later. Now, I want you to tell me the difference between right and wrong. You mean your mommy didn't ever teach you about it? <laughs> yes, of course, but uh, you see, that was quite a long time ago. Now, I'd like very much to have you explain it to me. Well, let me think. There's the right to do with the pencil, but that's a different kind. And there was your right hand, and there's your right road, and it's right to mind growing up, and it's wrong not to be polite to people. And it's awful wrong to take things that don't belong to you. Now, do you understand? <laughs> All right. Now then, little lady. All right. Now, suppose you tell us just how clear you saw Miss Loring that day. Well, you see, it was like this. Me and Susie were playing. And all of a sudden, a bad dog grabbed her and bit a big hole in her side. It was awful. I thought Susie would die. So I took her to Dan. Cotton? Needle? Adhesive? Scissors. There. Will she get well, Dan? Can you fix her good as new? Can you, huh? Why do you think they call me Fixer, Dan? Susie's going to be all right. Not a thing to worry about. Who's that girl, Dan? You now put your finger here while I tie this ribbon. Makes a net earning of 30 cents for your first month in business. Gee, we'll be paying income tax in no time. <laughs> Ow! That's my sore toe. Did you see your doctor as you promised me? Well, not yet, but I'll see him tomorrow for sure. We'll see to that foot today. I'm going up to Doc Robbins after a while, and you're going with me, young man. Doc Robbins? Oh, no, Dan, please. Jeepers, I don't want to go to Doc Robbins. Sure glad I'm not you, Curly. That dog problem scares me. Me too. Dan! Dan! Dan, it's running. Your model works. Yes, Dudley, I've got it this time. It sounds like a million thousand bees. Does it make honey, Dad, does it? Of course not, silly. It makes atoms and stuff. But then, aren't all tiny things dangerous? Definitely. In this small firing chamber, for instance, there's enough power to blow us all to kingdom come. That's why this room is out of bounds for you youngsters when I'm not here. If it blew up, Dan, 
Who, would we just disappear like, like with atomic bombs? I'm afraid so, Spike, but don't you worry. I'm not going to let it blow us up. Now, suppose you all run along. Curly, you wait in the car. I'll be right up. Why, I'm drunk. You can get all of Bob Stock's now, don't you worry, Curly. We won't let you go up to Doc Robbins alone. If Curly has to go, we all go. Not me. I wouldn't go up to that spooky house of Doc Robbins for a billion dollars. Not even a thousand. Don't be afraid, Spec. I'll take care of you. Honest, I will. I promise. And so we all along in Dan's station wagon. But the boys are awful scared riding in the front seat with an atom bomb. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. Order doesn't understand. It wasn't an atom bomb, sir. Merely the firing chamber of Dan's atomic energy machine. Your Honor, I think perhaps this fix it Dan can tell us about it. He can't, though. He's gone away. He's gone away? Where? When did he go? I don't know. We haven't seen him since the day of the explosion. Your name? Beck. Yes, I see. I mean your legal name, please. Clarence Lillian Within Jones. Junior. I think we could understand you better if you took the gum out of your mouth. That's better. Now, were you present at the Fix-It shop on the morning of Wednesday, July 10th? Let me think. Wednesday the 10th. I don't remember for sure. You see, I'm not very much good on dates. I always get them wrong in school. I get my best marks in poultry. Make it up myself. You want to hear one? Nature. Isn't nature a beautiful thing? The music in the air makes you sing. Back and forth go the huge trees and honey made by the bees. Blue as a water with pure white foam and mother's car and the young to come home. Nature did her job well and not even once did she fail. Give me that gum. <laughs> order, order. You want to hear another one? Bombs away. We're over Tokyo now, another day. All right, boys, bombs away. Good work, boys, another hit. I bet them Japs down there have an awful fit. Try it again. You're doing okay. All right, now bombs away. The bomb hit with a burst of noise. Guess who they were? That's right, the two little boys. Oh, excuse me. With the court's permission, I'd like to excuse this witness and call him later. Order! Order! And what is your name? Curly. Yes, I should have. Your legal name. William Benson. Thank you, William. Now, will you tell us what happened at Dr. Robin's office that morning? I mean, before or after he and Dan had the fight. <gasps> oh, so they had a fight. Rhymes, go home. Please, Rhymes, go home. I appeal to your honor, please. Get that dog out of this courtroom. All right. Will you please tell the court? Oh! Order. In the interest of time, let the dog have his way. Suppose you start by telling us when you all left the shop. Well, like Arda said, we drove up to Doc Robbins' place in Dan's car. Just a dog or a bird. I hear Doc Robin keeps wild animals chained up in that big old house. Sorry, I wasn't expecting visitors. Hope you haven't been waiting long. Not long. Children, this is Miss Laurie. Good afternoon. Do you suppose the doctor will have time for an emergency patient? I think so. Just a moment, I'll find out. That's the same girl. Sorry, he must have gone up to the house. He spends most of his time on research now. I'll call him.
Yes? Would you give the doctor a message, please? Yes. I'll tell him. Maybe the doc's too busy. Can't we come back later or something? Now, don't be impatient. I'm sure he'll be down any minute. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, good afternoon, doctor. Do you mind taking a look at this young man? Come right in. Self refusal. We'll fix that, Miss Loring. Would you see to the dressing, please? Yes, Doctor. Are you successful, Cameron? I'm ready to go ahead with the full scale machine. I've been needing more materials. Oh, yes, of course, of course. You shall have everything you need. However, I have a great deal at stake in this project. And if anything happened to you, I'd be left with nothing, absolutely nothing, to show for my investment. Oh, I realized that, Doctor. So I brought along the specifications and the firing chamber of the model itself. Uh, just a moment. I have an interest in this, too. We both know the term of destructive weapon. So I must have your guarantee that it'll be used only for the betterment of mankind, not its destruction. But surely, Cameron, you don't think we have any intention. We? Just whom do you mean by we, Doctor? Myself and my associates. Naturally, in a venture of this magnitude, I can't assume the entire financial risk. Strange. Our original understanding made no mention of associates. Just who are they, Doc? I am not at liberty to say at this time. However, you have my assurance. Your assurance? For what, Doc? To sell humanity short? Oh, no. Before I'd let that happen, I'd smash my life's work into useless fragments. While men like you and your partners exist, the world can never know peace. Carly, that sure sounds mad. And I'll see to it that you'll never get your hands on these. Well, since you're being so high-handed, you force me to adopt the same measures. Either you leave me those papers or I keep this. Keep it and welcome. I can easily duplicate it. And it won't do you any good. I promise you that. Long distance. said a word on the way back or anything. And when he made these threats to Dr. Robin's life... He didn't he... mean it that way. Why, well, Dan's the swellest guy in the world. He wouldn't kill anyone. I know he wouldn't. Your Honor, I demand that a warrant be issued for the arrest of this, this fix-it Dan. Somebody want me? It's Dan! It's Dan! I'm sorry, Your Honor, if my arrival created a disturbance, but it was apparently timely. From what I overheard, I, I'm a wanted man. You are a fix-it, Dan? Well, sir, that's my, uh, shall I say, local trademark for my repair shop. 
May I ask Your Honor why I'm wanted? For questioning in the state's case against Anne Loring. But Your Honor, she's no more guilty of murder than, than those children. The charge is ridiculous. Frankly, I feel whoever disposed of Hugo Robin did the world a service. But it certainly wasn't Anne Loring. Most convincing. I trust you'll be as effective in your own defense. If the court please, I ask that this man be held in custody until formal charges can be brought against him. <laughs> This isn't a welcome sight. Hi, Dad! Well, how are you? Hey, you you had a few things home. to do. You did, and what did oh, you do? It's nice of you to come and see me. Well, isn't it beautiful? Uh, thanks, kids, thanks. You know, that's a very nice compliment. <laughs> hey, who's making all that racket in here? Oh. Well, I ought to know better than leave a bunch of kids alone. Well, will you look at that pile of plunder? Uh, what do you think you're hiding, huh? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Let me have a look at that bouquet. That does it. Now get out of here, all of you. We have important matters to discuss, and you said we could have 15 minutes. This is a chip. Will you be quiet and get out of here? Now get out of here. Please, you kids will have me back walking a beat. <laughs> Got another visitor for you. Sing out when you're ready to go. All right. Jailer, something you overlooked. Oh, thanks. Fifty famous fairy tales. Huh? Eh? This is it. Come on. That lawyer guy's in there. It's no use kidding ourselves, Professor. We might as well face it. But the whole thing's preposterous. My firing chamber didn't cause that explosion. If it had, it'd blown up not only the doctor's office, but half the town. Don't you see, sir? Without the firing chamber, we have no proof. After the testimony of those kids, we'd be lucky to settle for manslaughter. Chamber? Well, they... I mean, what did they do to Dan? Well, it's life imprisonment, at least. And it's all our fault. That lawyer guy said so. We just gotta do something. But what, Curly? Go look for that firing chamber. Dad left him in the duck's office that day, and... You mean to go near that house again? Dan's always helped us. Now he's in a jam. Are we gonna let him down? Of course not. Come on, Speck, let's go. Well, don't leave us. We can help, too. We've all got work to do. Come on. We don't want to Me too. Don't you come down here, Rags? You think I'm waiting? 
something around here we can use for a ladder. A tunnel and stairs. I wonder where they go. They evidently left the doctor's office before the explosion. That's how I must have got in that day without us seeing. Well, it would seem to me that this tunnel's our only hope. I'm not going in there, not me. Well, you just can't stay here in stars, Beth. Come on, Beth. Don't be scared. Let's find that ship and get out of here. We'd better divide up the 
church systematically. Wait! Ha, 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 ha. 
himself too? It's that nurse. I know it. Searching the closet and suddenly the door slammed shut and locked. I remember getting dizzy and then everything blacked out. No wonder. Look at this. Well, 
Well, if the late Dr. Robin was still with us, I'd probably have come to as a guinea pig or something. Oh, darling, don't kid about it. The very thought of the man makes me shudder. Come on in, let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
not your fast. But I tell you, we've got him, and we can't get out. And there's a giant gorilla chasing us. Now get this, you kids. I ain't a phone for any more of your shenanigans. You ain't getting any police up to Doc Robbins for any wild goose chase after giant gorillas and fire in chambers. Are those youngsters up at Robin's house? What do they say about a fire in the chamber? Answer me. Rex. What is it, boy? Your young pal's in trouble? Say, Professor, did Doc really experiment on wild animals up there? Professor? Uh -huh. Professor! <laughs> Professor! Dog. Somebody took the squad car. Well, get the other car. Get the squad car. It's gone dead. without the machine, as I've been trying to convince the police here ever since my arrest. And they wouldn't believe that I stayed on with Dr. Robbins just to watch him. He must have become suspicious and faked his own murder just to implicate the both of us. Yeah, and this explains that phone call to Chicago you told me about. They have himself shipped out as one of his own specimens. He's all yours, Inspector. Come on, Gargantua. The Chief wants to do a little research with you. 